Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hare Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hare Kopi Janna Valaba Kirivana Dari Gopi Janna Valaba Girivana Dari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janna Valaba Girivana Dari Gopi Janna Valaba Girivana Dari So the Nandana, but the Dana Randana. Yes, so the Nandana, but the Dana Randana. Jamuna Tiravana Chari. Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Radha Gopi Janna Valaba Girivana Dari Gopi Janna Valaba Girivana Dari Yasura Nandana Marjana Ranjana Yasura Nandana Marjana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vana Chari Tira Jamuna Tira Vana Chari Tira Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Om Vishnupad Panamahangsa Prabhupada Jakacharya Asatya His Divine Grace, Sila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Sila Prabhupada Ki, Dhananta Kota Vaishnavinda Ki Jai, Namacharya Sila Harita Stakura Ki Jai, Iskan Founder Acharya Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Prem Sikaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasati Gaur Bhaktivedanta Ki Jai, Shri Sri Radha Krishna Gopinath Samakun Radha Kun Giri Govardhan Ki Jai, Shiva Navanam ki jai, Shri Maya Panavdam ki jai, Ganga Maya ki jai, Jamuna Maya ki jai, Tulsa Deva ki jai, Bhakti Deva ki jai, Soma Veda Bhakti Vanda ki jai. Transcendental Bhakti Shribhushan ki jai, Hari Nam Sankirtan ki jai, Go Premanandi. All glory to some devotees, all glory to some devotees, all glory to some devotees, all glory to glory Shishi Guru and Shri Gauranga. Which verse are we on now? Eighteen. Chapter twenty-four. Which text? Eighteen. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So this morning we're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, text or chapter 24, and text number 18. It's a long prose, so I'll just go right to the end. Sanskrit, hurry to the English. Below the planet Vitala is another planet known as Shutala, or the great son of Maharaj Virochana, Bali Maharaj, who is celebrated as the most pious king, resides even now. For the welfare of Indra, the king of heaven, Lord Vishnu appeared in the form of a dwarf Brahmachari as the son of Aditi and tricked Bali Maharaj by begging for only three paces of land, but taking all the three worlds. Good trick. Magician. <laughs> Being very pleased with the Bali Maharaj for giving all his possessions, the Lord returned his kingdom and made him richer than the opulent King Indra. Even now, Bali Maharaj engages in devotional service by worshipping the Supreme Personality of God in the planet of Shutala. Purport. The Supreme Personality of God it is described as Uttama Shloka, he who is worshipped by the best of selected Sanskrit verses. And his devotees, such as Bali Maharaj, are also worshipped by Punya Shloka. Verses that increase one's piety. Bali Maharaj offered everything to the Lord, his wealth, his kingdom, and even his own body. Sarvatma Nevedhane Bali. The Lord appeared before Bali Maharaj as a Brahmana beggar, and Bali Maharaj gave him everything he had. However, Bali Maharaj did not become poor by donating. <laughs> 
all his possessions to the Supreme Personality of God, he became a successful devotee and got everything back again with the blessings of the Lord. Similarly, those who give contributions to expand the activities of the Christian consciousness movement and to accomplish its ob ob objectives will never be losers. They will get their wealth back with the blessings of Lord Krishna. On the other side, those who collect contributions on behalf of the Supreme of the International Society for Christian Consciousness should be very careful not to use even a farthing of the collection for any purpose other than the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Omigyanatamanandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshuram Militam Jena Tazmai Sri Gadavai Nama Mukram ko tuba chalam pongun long hai tegurim yet kripa tadaham bande shigurim dinataranam Vancha kapati biasta kripa sindub devicha patitanam pavanavio vaisnavavio namo namaha Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Sri Advaiti Gadadhar Sivasati Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. In this purport, it's mentioned a couple times that the blessings are given by Krishna. So one may ask, well, how do you get the the blessings of Krishna? The best way to get blessings of Krishna is by <laughs> that's a good way to get the that's a very good way to get blessings of Krishna by serving the pure devotee and Srila Prabhupada said distribute books so <laughs> they're, they're connected <laughs> so yeah by pleasing the pure devotee we uh, get the blessings of Krishna and there's a nice pastime I heard about Indra Swami, who, when he first went to Europe, he went with another devotee, and and they actually they all met. I think they all met with somehow they met Prabhupada, or they, maybe they went to pick up Prabhupada or something. They 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 went to go pick up Prabhupada at the airport, and you know you can imagine this is like I don't know, maybe 1971 or something. But there's a lot of devotees greeting Prabhupada at the airport. And somehow the luggage got lost. So Indra Swami was asked to stay back and get the luggage. So he was, oh, all right. <laughs> so he had to wait and wait and wait and finally he got the luggage. And then he went back to the, te he went to the temple and there was, Prashadam had already been all distributed, the pro, everything was over, the class was over, Prashadam was distributed, and he's, he's got these, this heavy luggage, he's, 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 he's got to go up to like, I don't know, the second or third floor, he's got to lug this heavy luggage up the, up the steps, and finally he, he gets up there and, and sets it down, and then, he, and then, then he, hear, he, he feels a slap on his back. And the servant was there and said, Boy, you just got the mercy of Prabhupada. You just got the blessings of Prabhupada. Because he heard, he, in the Unison, he heard something, but he didn't hear what he, he said. Prabhupada said that in this world, everything is very difficult. But when you go back to the spiritual world, everything will be very easy. So it was like like a blessing, you know. <laughs> You're doing everything so nicely here. It's difficult, but when you go back home, everything will be very easy. But while we're in this world, we have to work hard. Sometimes, even in this world, there's there's ease lovers, you know. Yeah. Like like to take it easy. You know? But no, we should work hard for Krishna. Yeah. Like the the karmis, where do they work? Like minimum eight hours a day. Sometimes they're working two, two jobs. I met one guy with three jobs. You know, they're working like 
Sometimes we're working 16, 18 hours a day. But some of our devotees, if they, if they work two hours, like, phew. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of work, man. <laughs> so we shouldn't be ease lovers. We should, we should work hard for Krishna. Krishna be pleased. Get the blessings. Get the blessings of Krishna. There's another nice uh, pastime of Indra Swami and Prabhupada. In France, he was, he, was a, he was a book distributor in France for many years. And he said that's how he, he uh, was able to be successful, so successful with his preaching in Poland. So he was uh, there in France, in Paris, and Prabhupada came to visit. And the, before Prabhupada came, there was a contest. Whoever was the biggest book distributor for, like, I think it was two weeks before Prabhupada came, got to bathe Prabhupada's feet. So he won. He won the marathon. And he was bathing Prabhupada's feet. And after he bathed Prabhupada's feet, he had this bowl pretty good sized bowl of water and he, he took it up to his room and there was one devotee who was also smart he was following him he was right behind him <laughs> and he went into the to his room locked the door and they just they guzzled the whole the whole pot of water <laughs> so he, and the dude in the song would drink some and then he'd pass it on to his friend and he'd drink some and he'd pass it on and while they're drinking they're hearing some pounding on the door. And Indra Dumna Swami said to his friend, Do you hear anything? No, not me. And <laughs> they just continued to me. <laughs> and he said, because, because, of I got, because I got that mercy, therefore Krishna is allowing me to do so much service. Got the blessings. Got the blessings of the pure devotee. So, yeah, by service to the pure devotee, we get the blessings of Krishna. There's one, an, another interesting pastime with uh, Radna Swami, who's coming soon, here, tomorrow. He was in Tucson. And there was one devotee there that, that wanted to serve, do some service for Maharaj. So he was asking him, Maharaj, is there any service I can do for you? So no, no, okay. Please, Mars, there must be some service I could do for you. No, 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 okay. Please, Mars, just some any any little thing, please. No, no, I'm all right. Please, Mars, mercy. He said, okay. Oh, good, yeah. Just one thing. Take the dust off your feet and put it on my head. Oh. Mars, anything but that. <laughs> no, no, you said you'll do any service for me that I want. Come on, you got to keep your promise. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> he, he, got out, he got out of there. <laughs> so, the humility of uh, Radna Swami. And many people wanted to get the blessings of the Prabhupada. But generally, especially the, the, the Hindus, they, blessings means, you know, they got some bodily ailment or, oh, my family is this or my, you know, something, you know, some material thing. So, so Prabhupada was on a, on a train one time and, and these, these Hindus were, they saw Swamiji there. They wanted to get in and get some association, some blessings. And devotees saw them, and they, they, they didn't want them to bother Prabhupada. But finally, somehow they got in, and uh, Swamiji, please, please, can you, can you bless us, bless us? And Prabhupada knew they just want some material. My blessing to you is you become like them. He pointed to the sannyasis. Oh, oh, Swamiji, we have to run now. Thank you very much. <laughs> <It took off. laughs> 
They didn't want that blessing. Yeah. <laughs> they always want some material blessing. But Prabhupada, he, 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 gave, he blessed the, the whole world, actually. I was just listening to a lecture. He said, we should be surrounded with the Krishna atmosphere. We should be surrounded with the Krishna atmosphere. Now when Prabhupada came to New York, there was nothing. There was not a devotee in the whole country. Maybe, I mean, there were some Hindus, of course, but, but a, a real bhakta devotee it probably wasn't. A, he had no association. But he was so absorbed, he was so full of Krishna consciousness that he created the Krishna atmosphere. First in New York and gradually throughout the whole world, he created the Krishna atmosphere so the devotees can be surrounded. It's like here we have this nice temple where we can be surrounded with the Krishna atmosphere. We have the nice temple here. And we have, uh, of course, the deities and prasadam and devotees and, and, and preaching and harinam, book distribution. It's, we're just surrounded with the, with the Krishna atmosphere. It's very conducive for us to also become internally absorbed in Krishna. You know, now that we have this external uh, uh, opportunity to become Krishna conscious, so if we take advantage of that, we could become internally Krishna conscious. But of course we have to we have to get the blessings of Krishna. Now sometimes it's it's hard to see the the blessings. Just, uh, they have that same blessings in disguise. It's hard to see the blessing. But sometimes Krishna it's like the Krishnas they say, God works in mysterious ways. <laughs> And it's true. To give you an example, there's one instance of uh, one person in, in New York City. He was a drug dealer. And he owed a lot of money to some people. So they broke into his house. And they beat him up. He tried to defend himself, and there was a few of them. They beat him up pretty, pretty bad. Knocked him unconscious. He's laying there unconscious, and they saw one book on the table called Reservoir of Pleasure. Probably. And they opened it up, and they put it on his unconscious face. Yeah. <laughs> and they left. So he, when he came to, he came to consciousness again, he's like, you know, there's blood around. And he, this, this book is on his face. And he, he never, he hadn't remember seeing it. It's his apartment, but he's, he got it from somebody. So, a reservoir of pleasure. So he opened it up and he started reading it right there. He read it all the way through and eventually became a devotee. <laughs> Blessing in disguise. You know, you know, who wants to get beat up? But from that, he, you know, he just thought, enough of this material life, you know. And he's reading Prabhupada's divine message about real life. You know? So he became a devotee. Another instance of, uh, some of you might have heard this, but there was a person in uh, Santa Barbara going to school. And he was riding his bike, and somehow he fell down, and he hit his head unconscious. Then he woke up, and he had and he, he, complete amnesia, total amnesia, didn't know his name, didn't know where he lived, just zero, total amnesia. So he got up and thought, well, I figured this bike must be mine. It's down, I'm down. So he picked it up and he's walking his bike, not knowing where he's going. Total amnesia. So he's walking along and, and one devotee is distributing books. He said, hey, how's it going? He started talking. He said, where are you from? I don't know. I hit my head. I, I don't have any memory of anything. My name, nothing. So the devotee said, well, I'll tell you who you are. You're the eternal servant of Krishna. I said, oh, okay, well, at least I know something. Though. 
So this devotee understood his very awkward situation, so he kind of took him under his wing, and he, he, he could see he was a, a decent boy, just awkward situation. So he took him and he, he, had, he let him stay at his apartment. He taught him, taught him all about Krishna consciousness. He became a book distributor. Omkar became a good book distributor. He became the temple commander also in Los Angeles. Now he's in uh, Japan. Blessing in disguise. Who would want such a thing? He was total amnesia. What's interesting is he, uh, after finding out who he, who he actually was, he wanted to find out who he was materially. So he put some leaflets uh, around the campus there, UCSB. You know, I have amnesia. If you know who I am, give me a, please call this number. And many people knew who he was. And he found out, you know, some, uh, someone there knew, even knew his family. So he contacted his family. And it turns out he was a big atheist <laughs> before. <laughs> So Krishna covered all that up. He's a little trickster, you know. <laughs> covered all that up and became a good devotee. So this is uh, Krishna's uh, mysticism. He was here before. Oh, did he live here also? I guess maybe. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> before school. So I, saw, I also wanted to talk about uh, attitudes that devotees have when uh, they're in some calamity. Just like Bali Maharaj, he was in this calamity, major calamity. You know, he, was, he, he had taken over heaven, and he had it. He had conquered, it's his. And then the Lord appears as uh, Vamana Dev. Yeah, just a little small dwarf, and and Bali Maharaj, he's got some some culture, and is there, is there anything? He's a brahmana, so is there anything I can, I can do for you? And he said, well, yeah, you could just just give me three paces of land. And he said, you don't understand. I can give you, I can give you a lot more than that. You're not very intelligent. Please ask for more than that. No, no. I'm, I'll be satisfied. Yeah. If the, he said, if the senses are uncontrolled, then one is not satisfied by anything. So just give me three paces of land. All right. So he, with two, was it two steps? He took over the universe, and then the third. Now I have another step. So what do I do with that? Put it on my head. <laughs> it was smart. But actually, before he, he offered that, his guru said, don't give this. This is Vishnu. And the, he said, there, the, the, there's actually a structure in, in, the, in the Vedas that if you don't say Om before you make a promise, it's okay to break the promise. You didn't say Om, so it's okay. <laughs> so he said, no. No, I've made a promise. He had some integrity. So that was his attitude. I've made a promise to this person. I'm going to stick to it. Yeah, some integrity. So he lost everything. But Krishna was so pleased that then he got everything back, even greater than that of Lord Indra. He became so wealthy. Yeah. So he had a good attitude. You make a promise, you stick to it. And Prabhupada was speaking about this, and he said, if, if someone makes a promise, for instance, the disciple, he makes a promise to the spiritual master, he's going to follow four regular principles and chant 16 rounds. If someone breaks that promise, he's an animal. It's a very heavy statement, Prabhupada. He's an animal. Animals, you know, they, they can't keep promises. They don't make promises. <laughs> they can't keep them, can't make them. But a human being makes a promise, he sticks to it. Otherwise, you're just an animal. So it's a, you know, it, it, taking initiation, it's a serious thing. Of course, sometimes when, 
devotees don't understand how, how serious it is, but it is very serious. You make a promise to Krishna, you make a promise to the spiritual master, you got to have that integrity, you got to stick to it. Under no circumstances breaking those, those principles. So another uh, person who had a, a very good attitude uh, in uh, difficulty was Prahlad Maharaj. His father tried to kill him in so many ways. Yeah. Tried to, you know, not only tried to, threw him off a cliff. Threw him in boiling oil. Yeah. And had these, these demons try to bindi, yeah, chop him up, chop, chop, <laughs> chop him up. He just, he was completely surrendered. His, his attitude was no fear. He had no fear. Krishna will protect me. No fear. It's like you hear about these, or you see these stickers, you know, no fear. You know, sometimes people have no fear, I have no fear. Yeah, right. <laughs> but here's a person, no fear, Pallad Maras. And a, a person, uh, an interviewer asked Prabhupada one time, uh, what is the result of this chanting? And Prabhupada said, I have no fear, fearless. He was pretty fearless even before meeting his spiritual master. And he, he went up in that, was that Victoria? The Victoria, they were building that, that, that uh, Victoria, what is it? Memorial. He went way up in these, in these and, and these are like, these are Indian, you know, what do they call them? The, Scaffolding, you know, all put together with ropes. He's going way up there. And the devotee said, Prabhupada, you are very bold. Yeah, I still am. I still am bold. <laughs> Courageous, yeah. Courageous. So, fearless. Another one is uh, Juva Maharaj. He was uh, humiliated totally humiliated in front of his, his brother and his father and by this uh, stepmother and his father didn't do anything. So he had this determination. Determination after humiliation. He had great determination to get a kingdom greater than that of his, of his father and of his great-grandfather. So he was doing this... Uh, this meditation, and doing austerities. So his mood, his attitude was determination. Yeah. And he was so determined that uh, he attracted Narada Muni. And Narada Muni gave him this, uh, this mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. And he, uh, he accepted that mantra and he serious, very serious meditation. Which means, I offer my respectful obeisances unto Bhagavan, Lord Vasudev. So he was chanting it with such sincerity that he got, he got purified. He got purified of his material desire, huge material desire. You know, have a kingdom greater than that of Lord Brahma. I mean, I don't know of anybody that's had a material desire greater than that. I mean, that's huge. <laughs> but he got purified. Just like we also have, we have material desires. But if we continue chanting, continue chanting and hearing seriously, then eventually we will also become free of material desires. And now we have faith in that which we can't see. Yeah. Krishna. Of course we see Krishna here. But this is the Archa Murti. But eventually, we'll have so much faith that we'll see Krishna, eventually. It's possible. It's actually natural for us to see Krishna. Because we're diseased, we're not able to see Krishna. We're not able to ab absorb our, our mind completely in Krishna because we're diseased. 
So now we're in the hospital. These are little uh, hospital facilities, these temples, where we can become free of this disease. It's the disease of forgetfulness yeah, of Krishna. So when we're free of this disease, then we'll always remember Krishna, be absorbed in Krishna. Another uh, person who had a good attitude after having difficulty, Bharad Maharaj, he was such a, a great devotee, he was on the level of Bhav. The planet was named after him, Bharad Varsh. He was such a, a, a great personality. But he became distracted by this uh, deer. So what was his attitude after realizing that he had totally blown it becoming, by becoming attacked, a, attracted to this deer? His mood was, never again. That was his attitude after, after blowing it, <laughs> after you know, getting to such a high level and losing it, you know, getting taking birth as a deer, you know, what a what a great loss! It gets so high. Imagine they get so high, and then fall down again. So you can even fall down from the level of bhav. It's amazing. Huh? Prabhupada said there was one devotee that was on the level of bhav. Yamuna. Yeah. He said if she was a man, he would, she would be a GBC. Now we have female GBCs. <laughs> so, yeah, that was his uh, attitude after having that fall. Never again. He took it more serious. And then when he became Judd Bharat, he didn't want to get any recognition. So he acted like a, like a buffoon, like a fool. So he get no, no position, no... So no pride can come up again, no foolishness. He's a great devotee, internal. No one could recognize that he was such a, a great devotee until he met King Rahugana. Then he realized that this is a great, great devotee. Another one was uh, Gajendra who was uh, uh, caught by a crocodile. For how long? A hundred celestial years, from what, I, from what I remember, wasn't it? A thousand. Oh. <laughs> Maybe you could look it up, make sure. That's a long time. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't eat anything. Couldn't sleep very hard. <laughs> He's got this, this crocodile. I mean, also the crocodile. I mean, of course, he's, he, they, they live off blood. But I mean, he couldn't. He couldn't rest. I mean, you know, okay. it's inconceivable. One of the inconceivable things to chint you. you know? But what was his attitude? His attitude was, I need help. I'm not, I'm not going to get out of this. I need some help. So from his past life, he remembered some verses. And he was somehow with this elephant, or maybe it was in his mind, you see, somehow <laughs> these verses were coming out. And he pleased Krishna. There's one devotee in, uh, in uh, ISV who, he was, they were doing Harinam. And one lady came to him and said, what does this mean? And he gave a very nice reply. He said, this, this, what we're chanting, it means, God, I need help. Please help me. So I thought that, that, that was, that's a very good definition of the Hare Krishna mantra. <laughs> God, I need help. We need help. Good gender needed a lot of help. So we also, we needed a lot of help. That's a nice, uh, nice mood. So we should all be in the mood of, uh, or the, have the attitude of gratitude. We should be grateful for everything that, uh, 
that Krishna is giving to us. Uh, it's actually a, a great benediction to, to be able to, to participate in this Krishna consciousness movement. I mean, how many people were here in, in San Diego? About three million in the whole San Diego area. Nine devotees are living in the temple. That's, that's a blessing, that's pretty. Of course, you have your temple. Huh? Online. Oh, we have, we have, well, we have, there's devotees that live outside the temple here. They're also very sincerely engaging in Krishna consciousness. But to live in the temple, just like there was one devotee who, who wanted to live outside. Now, when, back in the early days, if you lived outside, Pretty much, you were in Maya. <laughs> if you lived in the, if you lived in the temple, you're Krishna conscious. But if you lived outside, you're just you're in Maya. So a devotee, his householder, said, Prabhupada, I'm thinking that I, you know, I'm going to take the household life and I should I live outside. But devotees are saying, devotees are saying, if I live outside, then I'll, I'll, I'll be in Maya. And Prabhupada said, No, no, that's not so. If you're Krishna conscious, you could turn your house into, as, as Bhakti Thakur says, Goloka Vrindavan. You know, he didn't live in a temple. So no, you could, you could turn your house into a, into a temple. So Prabhupada, of course, had that broader vision. But Prabhupada said, just like in business, a good businessman, he'll live near the, the stock market. That's where all the action is. Yeah. Other people, they can also make money, you know, 3,000 miles away from the stock market. But there's much more opportunity at the stock market. So similarly, to live in the temple, there's much more opportunity to be, as I mentioned earlier, to be surrounded by the atmosphere of Krishna than outside. So it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful opportunity to, uh, become, to become Krishnaized, as Prabhupada said. Just, just being in this Krishna atmosphere. You know? Of course, we're still dealing with our mind. There's, <laughs> there's a Maya atmosphere is there still. But uh, we're in a situation where, we, where maya can be removed. We, we can become free. So it's, yeah, it's a, great, it's a great opportunity. So here in this, uh, in this uh, verse also it's mentioned that Krishna, he, he disguised himself. Krishna is very good at disguising himself. Dwarf Brahmana. And he comes in many disguises. And just like uh, Lord Chaitanya, he came disguised as a devotee. And he, he acted the role perfectly. And even if someone would say that he is Vishnu, he would, he, would, he, would close, he would cover his ears and run away. He was a perfect example of a devotee, absorbed in Krishna, chanting Krishna's name, preaching Krishna's name. Just a perfect example of a devotee. Even when he, after he uh, met his spiritual master, Iswarapuri, when he came back to Navadvip, he acted like a humble bhakta. He would wash the devotee's clothes and do humble menial service, just like bhaktas here, you know, new bhaktas, they come and do menial service. So he was like a new bhakta, doing menial service for all the devotees. Yeah. Yeah. Came disguised. And Krishna Leela, he, he was with the gopis. And he saw Abhimanyu coming down the walkway. And he told the gopis, watch this. So he disguised himself as Abhimanyu. And he went to the mother of Abhimanyu and said, Mata, Krishna is coming down the walkway right now, disguised as me, and he's going to play tricks on you. I just wanted to let you know. So then she thought, okay, again. So then when, when, when Abhimanyu came, she started beating him. <laughs> you rascal, you rascal, I know you're Krishna, just come in disguise, playing tricks on me. And, no, 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 Mata, my, I'm, I'm, this, I'm Abhimanyu, I'm not, I'm not Krishna. <laughs> She's beating him. 
And the gopis are watching, they're, they're laughing. You know, Krishna's playing. Uh, Krishna's known as Kautiki. Kautiki means Krishna has the best sense of humor. So when we go back to the spiritual world, Krishna's going Krishna's to have us laughing a lot. <laughs> you know, this is the only one that I could think, the only pastime where I think that where Krishna's you know, cutting a joke, <laughs> making a joke with someone. But it goes on unlimitedly. You can imagine. Just like here in this world, there's so many comedians that have very good sense of humor. You know? They make millions of dollars, some of them. So where are their ideas coming from? Krishna. <laughs> so Krishna has the best sense of humor. <laughs> Something to look forward to also. So Krishna came as uh, disguised as the boar. Yeah. I was in Mayapur and one devotee said, he asked a question, that boar is a pig, ugly. And I said, no, no, no. This boar had lotus eyes. It was beautiful. A beautiful boar. Only Krishna can come. As a beautiful boar. <laughs> and he came as Nishringadev, half man, half lion. Powerful. Amazing disguises. It's like in Halloween, people dress up in so many different ways. In Hawaii, there was uh, devotees doing a Harinam. On Halloween night, many devotees. And there was a couple of karmis that were dressed up as Hare Krishnas. You know, and they, you know, they put stockings, you know, sometimes they put stockings, you know. They, so they put a stocking and had their, their hair coming out the end, you know. And they had, you know, dhotis on. You know, it didn't look too good, but <laughs> something. And one of the devotees said to the two of them, Hey, be careful. You might become one of us. You know? You're dancing with us, you're chanting Hare They were chanting and everything. Be, you might become one of us. And they like, yeah, sure, buddy. You know? And they just, yeah, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. You know? <laughs> one of them became a devotee. <laughs> Bear Krishna became a disciple of Bear Krishna Maharaj. <laughs> so, this is the power of the, of the holy name. And Haridas Thakur, he, he, he went through amazing uh, difficulties. But he's Namacharya. Yeah, he, he was a Muslim, but he was chanting Hare Krishna. And Muslim didn't like that. So you've been born in such a, a, a high family. How, how have you become a Hindu? And what was his reply? Eh, so many Hindus become Muslims. So what? Well, one Muslim becomes a Hindu, what's, what's the big deal? Yeah. They couldn't tolerate it. Actually, it's, it's a stricture in the Muslim religion. If anybody gives up the Muslim religion to join another, that, that's reason for death. They can kill you for that. And you all know Taradas. That was one of the, the arguments that his mother gave to him when he became a Hare Krishna. That the Muslims are going to kill us now because you become a Hare Krishna. They're going to kill you too. You better look. <laughs> Tried to scare him. <laughs> So they thought well, he should just be beaten. So, what is it, 22 marketplaces? Cain. Yeah, was that they were going to beat him to death. Yeah, right. And it yeah. turned out that even after 22 marketplaces, he wouldn't die. If not, they said, we're going to beat him in 22 marketplaces. He was just chanting. I know, chanting but the plan dancing. was not to beat him in 22 marketplaces. Yeah. So he was just chanting and dancing. But he was so absorbed in Krishna, and Lord Chaitanya was so pleased with him, that he accepted the beating himself. Lord Chaitanya accepted the beating. He didn't feel any, any difficulty at all. So his attitude was, take shelter of the holy name, Krishna will protect. Yeah. Absorbed in the holy name of Krishna. So another thing to learn from a great soul, just take shelter of the holy name. What was it, Bhakti no Thakur? says nothing but the, the holy name of the whole 14 worlds. You know. Just take shelter of the holy name. 
all protection will be there. So, is there any questions or comments? Comment. A little comment. Um, in the Bhagavad Gita, I've been looking at these verses, like Raga Dveshiva Muktai is too. Yeah. And in the second and third chapter, there's a little, uh, the problem says uh, attachment, Raga's attachment. And Vesha is defined in the word by words as detachment. You have uh, attachment, and then in the, in the purport also is a detachment. It should be aversion. And that reminded, that Haridas Thakur passed and reminded me of that. Because he didn't, even, he didn't have aversion, hatred toward these people who were beating him, almost, you know, like anything. Approving it, but when they said when they were became they became afraid because they weren't able to kill him, and they said, oh, wh "Why are you? Why are you in anxiety?" He asked, "Because if we don't, if you don't die, we're going to get executed." And he very mercilessly said, "Oh, then I'll die." So he played it being dying. We go into Mahasamadhi that looked like death. But that's that's difficult, you know. We think, well, I, I've, I've given this attachment, I've given this attachment up, but the aversion part can be harder. If someone gets angry at you or insults you or punches you in the mouth, how are you not averse to them? You know, it's almost a, almost a visceral thing. Is that, you know, so that's, this is a standard of the great devotees. They're not, no hatred to them. Yeah. No judgment. They treat the enemies and friends equally. Yeah. It's amazing. Also in the Bible. Yeah, it's an amazing uh, consciousness to have. Yeah. Anything else? No one else has anything. I did, I did have a comment. Uh, you were telling me uh, a couple of things, but you were saying about the nine devotees, and you know, that's, that's actually 333,000 to one, you know, so just appreciating the good oh, yeah. fortune of the devotees in the temple, you know, if there's three million people. You, you, you got a, you got a well, math just mind. roughly, you know. 330,000 people to per, one, per one, per one, of, one of, devotee. Of the nine wow. living here, yes. Yeah, so, you know, it's one of those Manushanam Sahashrashu for sure, you know, like the. And then, you know, that good fortune is, is you know, we have to really value it. Um, here's a little story on amnesia. It's kind of going the other way. I was on a traveling party with two other devotees, the disciples of Satsuru Maharaj, and at the end of the day, we took a swim, and we were riding the waves, body surfing. And the one devotee thud, you know, he hit the bottom and came out, and it was total amnesia, you know. And luckily, the other devotee on the party was his best friend, but he didn't remember him, he didn't remember his own name, he didn't remember Sats Rup Maharaj, couldn't figure out what the wooden things with the bag were. I mean, like, you know, and luckily we were staying in a little hotel that was just nearby, you know, and uh, we got him back there. You know, we actually got him to a clinic and they said, well, sometimes it goes away in about 24 hours, you know. But, like, we didn't know what was going to happen, you know, and we kept trying to remind him stuff and he was, you know, and in about 24 hours, it, it did start coming back, and then within like, you know, little, he totally came back. But it was, it was quite frightening, you know, because Krishna, Satsarup Maharaj, Prabhupada, is all gone, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, it was I've never sad. heard of that happening before. Yeah, Jagannath Krishna, remember him? He did some art for the BBT at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he was here, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it was it was quite something actually. It, it all came back, but it was like there was a twenty four hours of just like somehow he knew that we same kind of thing. He could sense that we knew him and cared about him, even though he didn't know us, you know. And he didn't really have any other options, you know. We were actually in Malaysia, you know. <laughs> so it was oh, like, Malaysia. He didn't know where he was, what he was, <laughs> who he was. It was like. <laughs> yeah. wow. But that, that's something we all go through every time we die. Mm. That's what that's what death, yeah. death means. Completely. We come out of the womb. We don't know who we are. are. Right. Depend on people who remind us. It's our parents. If they're karmis, we're going to be karmis. <laughs> then then the, our parents, you know, fill us with with illusion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's right in the Bible. It yeah. <laughs> so yeah, people in this world they have amnesia, forgotten, and that's what the book distribution is about. We're trying to remind people, you know, hey, <laughs> this is not you. You're you're the eternal servant of Krishna, and some people. They take it, yeah, yeah, all right, this this makes sense. Tyler, 15, 10 seconds. Yeah. Prabhupada was asked, 
in, in, in London, I think it was. He had, you know, he was meeting with the, he had just arrived, he was meeting with the uh, journalists, you know, they would come and ask him questions. What have you come to teach? What have you come to teach here? He said, oh, I have come to teach what you have forgotten. Well, yeah, that, that happened in, in England. When he was, you know, when he was in, when he arrived in England, they said, well, why have you come here? And he said, well, you took so much from India. You took so much from India, but you forgot to take the most important thing. I've come to bring that to you, Krishna consciousness. And so many British devotees became devotees. <laughs> they didn't take the most important thing, which is the knowledge. They, they actually tried to cover it up, right? The British, they just, you know, they wanted to make them all Christians, you know, they just, just take them away from this. Because they knew that if we don't change their culture, we're not going to be able to, to move it. So that's what they were doing, you know, bringing in tea and coffee and all kinds of nonsense, illicit things, dr drinking and just all nonsense, yeah. Western dress. And, Terrible. Okay. Is there anything on Zoom, or do you have something? Yeah. I've, I have a few points, but I've streamlined yeah. them. I no, can no, just no, go no. quickly. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, just a few. That was so robust. Just stories is so inspiring, Vijay. Very nicely done. It was expert. I'm sure you could have gone in another hour. I wish you could. Yeah. So just really briefly, uh, Govardhan, you're the head of the Sankirtan department. I think we have another place besides Walmart parking lots we can go. We can go to the traumatic brain injury units of hospitals. <laughs> they very nicely take books. Traumatic? Uh, brain injury. The head, oh. head trauma department of the hospitals. Yeah, they seem like they'd be ripe for distribution. Uh, you said uh, that idea of God, I need Krishna. We talked about like comma placement. Is that what the statement, God, I need Krishna? Was that what you had said? That person was lamenting, crying out, God, I need, was it Krishna? Oh, yeah, because. I need help. I need, okay, God, I need help. So. It, it, that's like two different ways, but they mean the same thing. Like, God, I need help. Or like, God, I need help. <laughs> Both of it's the same idea, right? We cry out for different reasons, right? Like, God, you're there, I need help. Or, oh man, I messed this up. God, I need help. So also, um, I was thinking, when Christ was being crucified, Dravida, it's very nice to have your comments back. He was saying that, uh, please forgive them for they know not what they do to the people that were crucifying him. And that's a glorified point in Christianity. He's being crucified, and he's saying, God, forgive them. He was tolerant. They don't know what they do. But we, we, we had it originally, right? Haridas yeah. Akur. Yeah, we had the original of all these, of all these later stories. Yeah. And I, I had an anecdote about Bhakti Saul, but he told me not to tell it, so I'm going to truncate this. I had a question, actually I had a spillover question from yesterday. I was cooking breakfast and I've asked a couple devotees and they haven't been able to answer it. And it was something that Vaikuntha Prabhu mentioned. He was talking about after uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's period, the uh, Goswamis were doing a lot of writing and trying to keep the movement together. And there were some challenges by different groups of people, including the Sahajis. And he ended by saying the Nichinanda Vamsis. That was a new term for me. Do, do you know who they were and why yeah, they, they were challenging? They, they were thinking that only those who were followers of Nityananda were actually uh, in, the, in the, and, and they had the Goswamis also in the line of the Nityananda monks. So they were, they, were, they were just totally into Nityananda, but re disregarded Lord Chaitanya. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, there's the Upper Sampradayas, there's a whole bunch of them. There's about, I think it was about 10 of them. Prabhupada mentions about and ten Upper Sampada. Yeah. So yeah, they were uh yeah, it's Kali Yuga. Yeah, it doesn't take long for for uh these Upper Sampradayas, these these so called spiritual paths to, to manifest. But they've picked Nichinanda. They've picked a really good character yeah. to put but it's not bona fide because it's not because Krishna. they neglected Lord Chaitanya. Oh, yeah. okay. If someone accepts Lord Chaitanya and neglects Lord Nityananda, also they, they, they miss the, the point. They, they, they're, they're off. That's off. Because they're, you know, it's Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda. They're Krishna and Balaram. Okay. So, yeah, you can't accept one and reject the other. There was a whole. What was that? There was, uh, there was that pastime of uh, Ramdas Abhi Ramdas? Mm. Who, uh, who's, who his brother, I think, accepted Lord Nityananda, wasn't it? And rejected Lord, Lord, Lord. 
and he, 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 I forgot what happened. Do you remember exactly what happened? Yeah, the Christian Scavarod. Oh, Christian Scavarod, yes. Yeah, his, his brother had disrespected uh, Lord Chaitanya, but accepted Lord Nityananda, I believe. And he, Krishna Kavaraj chastised his brother, and then he says, for, from, from my good act of chastising my brother, he had the dream where Nityananda appeared to him and told him to go to Vrindavan. That's when he, he took it. And, and Ramdas and Ramdas, he was visiting, and he was bowing down, and, and, and he had a flute. And when he heard the blasphemy, he broke his flute and went away. I remember that line. It's very... And uh, Krishna Stavar chastised his brother for accepting one and not, you know, yeah. rejecting the other. Yeah. But there's one, there's one thing about the Nityananda Bhanksha. My impression was that part of it is that he had children. You know, he was married and he had, he had some children. And that there's a, a class of, of devotees who claim to be his descendants. And that because they're descendants, they have a certain status, you know, which is completely bogus, you know. If they're, uh -huh. And they, they may be ones that just reject Lord Chaitanya and just accept mm -hmm. But the Bhanksha means that bloodline actually mm. Mm. and then the uh devotee who fell off above do you he was it he passed nishta though in my rudimentary understanding is he's fixed after nishta so how is he going to fall off above well there's different levels of of nishta okay. also so he didn't reach the highest level of of complete faith yeah. nishta he reads, I mean, that's like, yeah, that's, that's as high as you can go to the point where you, you can't fall down any, because the next one is praying. You can't fall down from that. So that's like as high as you can go before you can't fall down anymore. So, yeah, we have to be careful. Even when you get up that high, you have to, <laughs> you have to always be careful. Always be careful. And then demons that are enacting important like roles in Krishna's pastimes so that heroic deeds can be done, or, you know, people can conquer challenges. Do those demons receive any kind of, like, I don't know, benediction? Or, or It's important that they're mm -hmm. acting the way they're acting so these pastimes can incur. But are they just giving full, hey, go be as demonic as you can, enjoy this, and Krishna arranges it so things happen from that? Or are they actually kind of serving Krishna by setting that leela in action? Well, the demons that are killed by Krishna, sometimes they would go into the Brahma Jyoti, quite often they would but sometimes, like Putana, she became a nurse in Goloka Vrindavan. So, and it's, it's interesting, the, the mention here is Bali Maharaj. When Bali Maharaj was there and, and, and uh, Vamana came, Bali Maharaj's sister, when she saw Vamana Dev, she thought, oh, this is so beautiful, I would love to be the mother of such a child. But then after Vamana Dev took all the property away from Bali Maharaj, she thought, I want to kill this person. <laughs> so, <laughs> no change. so then she became Putana, where she became the mother, and she tried to kill. She tried to kill Krishna. So because she uh, was uh, uh, breastfeeding Krishna, he, accept, he just accepts the, uh, the favorable, he just sees the, the, the positive. So she became the mother in the spiritual world. One final word, maybe it's final, about his question. Yeah. There's a book called Garga Samhita. The backstory for all the, the demons that Krishna kills. Oh, the, wow. The, these are very fortunate souls. There's okay. Putin, of course, there, but there's all, every, everyone has something. Because to be killed by Krishna is to receive a great blessing. You know, you get liberation or you get, you know, Putin was the most. So there's, a, there's all these backstories. I can, I, I have okay. that. Please. Book. Yeah, I can yeah. share that with you. Wow, that'd Wonderful. be interesting. <laughs> and, and then I just had practical advice on a point you made, uh, and it goes back to, I've been in the temple room before, and like a uh, mother came in with her child, and it was the child's birthday, and the mother wanted me to give the child a blessing, because I was the only one in the room. So I got scared and ran to an adult. <laughs> so I said, Ramapati, can you do it? He couldn't do it. So I ran to Balram, Balram, can you do it? He couldn't do it. Balram, just, you just give her blessings. I go, how do I do it? And he's just, <laughs> Give her your blessing. So I came out and fumbled through some, like normal, <laughs> should I, you know. 
Well, you're talking about us giving the blessings. <laughs> so what I, did you do? I, I just kind of closed my eyes and chanted Namo Vish. I was like in front of Prabhupada. I was okay. trying to be like, all right, yeah, Prabhupada's blessing. Yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. I gave her incense and garland. Okay. You know, come you back again. I got to hear the prana mantra of Prabhupada. Yeah, I didn't. In front of Prabhupada. So awkward. Yeah, it was so. Okay. I don't even know if I looked at the child. I was just like, so. Because I don't feel qualified to give any blessings. I don't even really feel qualified to receive blessings. And I'm trying to get your blessings and, you know, Dravida's blessings. And so, how do we give blessings? I'll tell you a nice story, a nice book distribution story. <laughs> Devotee was distributing books, and he approached this family that had a little baby in the carriage. And they were a very nice couple, and, and they had a nice exchange with this devotee. And, and they said, well, can you baptize our child? <laughs> He's like, well, what? <laughs> there's no sacrificial arena here. There's no, you know, there's no brahmanas, you know. So, it, so he just leaned down and, and he, uh, he chanted. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And then he said, he's baptized. <laughs> okay. So they were happy. They bought books and everything. <laughs> yeah, that's the best way to, to give blessings. You did good, you know. Prana mantra or Prabhupada or chant Hare Krishna. That's a, that's a blessing to hear the holy name. It's a if blessing. I could have five yes. more seconds. <laughs> yes, yeah. Lord, Lord Chaitanya was was always asked, you know, and what what I remember, I think it's in the the CC or Krishna Matirastu, because I've I've been asked the same thing. I always give the same Krishna Matirastu. May you always think of Krishna. So you just give that blessing, you know. For, for the child, you know, and they're always satisfied with that. Lord Chaitanya would say that to Sarvam Bhattacharya. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's Krishna right. Matir Astu. May you always be Krishna conscious. Yeah. Okay, it's a little late. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. Yeah.